This week, we are taking a look at a character who played a brief but pivotal role in not just the gospel narrative, but in all of human history. This guy's name is Barabbas. Today, I wanted to capture a couple of critically unique aspects of this person named Barabbas and the implications of his story, what it means for each of us personally. First, it's important to note that this person, this event, this essential element of the gospel narrative is included in all four of the written biographies of Jesus. That's not as normal as one might think. For in contrast, of all the miracles Jesus performed, only one is in all four of the gospels, that being the feeding of the 5,000. It's as if the Holy Spirit working through each of the gospel writers is ensuring no one would miss this part of the story. Second, there's something very unique about Barabbas' name. You see, with a given name of Forrest, it's common for me to wonder, what's in a name? So it is with Barabbas. It's a name that, at first blush, we might just pass over. But upon further examination, we find a deeper meaning, perhaps a God-ordained one. You see, Barabbas is a patronym, that is, a name derived from one's father. In cultures where ancestry and descent from one's father are important, there are different ways of saying, son up. For the Scottish, McGregor means son of Gregor. For the English, Johnson is son of John. For the Russians, Petrov is son of Peter. In the Hebrew language, Ben David means son of David. For the Aramaic speaking Jews of Jesus' day, the prefix bar indicates son of. When a Jewish boy enters manhood, he is called bar mitzvah, son of the commandments. Barabbas then is simply son of Abba. And we know from Jesus' own words that Abba means father. So in essence, Barabbas is son of a father. But that's a strange sort of name, isn't it? Every one of us is a son or daughter of a father. His parents might as well have called him everyone. Hey, everyone. It doesn't just tell us very much at all, but then again, it tells us everything God wants us to know. Catch this. Just as Barabbas, someone we might call everyone or anyone, stood in judgment that day, guilty and in need of a savior to set him free, so too it is anyone and everyone of us who stands similarly today. And alas, alongside Barabbas, the son of a father representing all of mankind, there stood Jesus, the Son of God, God Himself. In this story, we witness a profound historical fact. And even more so, we are reminded of two current realities. First, that everyone is in need of being set free from their guilt and their shame. And second, that no one is too far removed from experiencing God's saving grace. Some might look at Barabbas as a loser, nothing but a guilty prisoner who is wrongfully set free at the request of an angry mob. But in reality, he was truly the first winner of the sacrificial life-giving work of Jesus. Let me end with the words from a song from the 90s by a gospel band, DeGarmo and Key, a song that to this day rings true as an anthem for me personally. Here's to all the losers who lose their guilt and sin. Here's to life in Jesus, where all the losers win.